Welcome to another inspirational moment with TL. I'm TL from Dream to Inspire, and this is your inspirational moment for today. Today, we're going to talk about a little bit more about how to handle fear. I was listening to a video on YouTube uh, from spiritual leader Eckhart Tolle, and he talks about how to handle fear. And what I love about his teachings is that it really has opened up my mind to so many different psychological aspects of life. Uh, I understand how fear plays a huge role in the way we make our decisions and how we view our ourselves and our, our, our thinking uh, or are unconscious of ourselves and our thinking. It's really woke me up to understanding everything that goes on in the mind in terms of ego, fear, identifying with things, um, all these needs and, and, and perceptions of life ourselves, the labels that we put on things. I mean, there's so many different aspects to his teaching that have really enlightened me and have make me have helped me wake up to uh, what life is really all about, right? So with that, uh, he goes on to suggest that during this time, as we're dealing through this very scary time with the pandemic and the, the, the health crisis around the world, he says that we are awakening at this moment and it, it's happening for those who can see past the fear of what's going on. So in his teachings, he does mention fear and how when we're afraid of something, we're possessed by this thought. Uh, it's kind of an unconscious happening uh, where we have this thought that happens in our mind and we get so wrapped up in the thought that we identify with it as if the thought is actually happening to us or that we are the thought, like I am angry, I am fearful because you identify with this thought pattern that carries uh, past experiences, behaviors, emotions, right? And our bodies respond to those thoughts through emotion. That's the physical uh, result of our thinking. So it's a measure of how our thinking is affecting us when we talk about emotion. So when we're dealing with fears, uh, there are those who get so wrapped up in their fear and then there are those who see it for what it is and are able to see past the fear uh, to continue moving forward. So how do you go beyond the fear, right? How do you go beyond this thought of fear? Well, uh, he suggests that awareness of what's going on in your mind to recognize that you are not the thought and just the thought uh, that's happening, right? So it's the thought that's just happening. This determines your level of consciousness. So this means that there are involuntary things that happen, like our breathing is involuntary, as well as it's voluntary. So we don't have to think about breathing. We just breathe, it's involuntary. We can force ourselves to breathe, but it happens naturally. Thank God, because if I had to think about breathing all day, it wouldn't work, I wouldn't go very far. But because it's involuntary, it's something that happens. Same thing with thinking. I mean, think about it. Even as you're listening to me now, there's probably different thoughts that are going on in your mind. Are you controlling every single thought that happens? No, it would be impossible because we have thousands of thoughts that go through our mind throughout the day. We wear ourselves out within the first hour of waking up. So things happen uh, involuntarily. So there is fear in the mind but all of these things that are happening, they're not happening actually right now, like physically. There's just a mental concept. This thing that's going on in your mind is just happening in this moment in your mind. It's a mental projection, basically. You are looking at something that happened in the future or that's going to happen in the future or that you think could happen in the future or something that has happened in the past, right? But when they happen, you have to face them either way. So if you're worried about getting sick, if you're worried about how you're gonna pay your bills, if you're worried about not having a job, those are legit concerns, I get it. But if you obsess over these fears and you start looking at the worst case scenario, well, if I get sick, I may die. If I lose my job, I won't be able to pay my bills and I'll be hum become homeless. Whatever the case is, you're projecting these mental um, 
projections. You're, you're projecting these mental conclusions, if you will, of what will happen. You're kind of affirming the worst case scenario. And the more that you do this, the cycle, the pattern just keeps repeating and it builds momentum. Uh, fear is energy, right? So you can build up enough fearful energy that could cause you to have a panic attack before you even realize it's happening. So the idea of being aware of this fearful thinking is your ticket to uh, end your suffering. Uh, what he goes on to say is that um, the more you think about them, the more you amplify them. It causes you to suffer, which is what I just mentioned. So there is, this is where the awareness of your thinking comes into play. Because thinking happens to you when you're not aware, right? But when you are unaware, it's like you are thinking, uh, sleeping, like a sleeping giant. You're, you're possessed within your, your own mind. You don't realize that it's happening to you. It's just a thought that's there. You think that you are the thought, that you are the thing that's happening in that moment. And if you step back, you'll realize that it's just a thought and that it's causing you to behave or respond in a certain way. Okay? Uh, the thoughts in your mind in the absence of awareness happen to you involuntarily. And once you really understand that, now you can separate yourself from your fear. Um, the fearful thinking, again, is just a happening. So you may ask yourself, why am I doing this to myself? Why am I making myself suffer? Well, this is because you weren't aware before, but now you are aware. So this is a good first step to building your awareness, as he suggests. Uh, the next step is to realize that there's really nothing that by thinking this, that's giving me value. There's nothing uh, serving me well by having these fearful thoughts. Okay, so now you must address that, that it's not serving you well. So now you have to make a choice, you know. If this thought were to continue, how does it empower me? How does it give me the tools and the, the wherewithal to get past uh, this, this situation, right? So now you have to start projecting different thoughts and it's a choice, which is the beauty of it. This is how you really create mental freedom, in my opinion. I believe this is where mental freedom begins uh, because you're no longer at the mercy of your thinking. So what do you do next? You recognize that what's been happening obviously doesn't serve you well, and you make a choice. So before, uh, there was an assumption in the unconscious mind that unless you worry about a lot that you're controlling, I mean, that you're not controlling life. So like, unless you feel like you have to worry about the pandemic to find a solution, and if you feel like you have to worry about your uh, financial future in this moment and because you feel like that's giving it attention to help you solve it, then you're in a lot of trouble because that's not how it works. Because the more you think about the problem, the fear, the more you create that cycle of momentum of energy, fearful energy, because what you focus on, you create. And that is so true in every situation. That's just the universal principle. So if you don't worry, your life will not fall to pieces, I promise. You can find a way to change your thinking so that way it's more conducive to empowering you and giving you the, the, the tools and the strengths that you need to really fight through this period of uncertainty, okay? The think, fearful thinking doesn't want to end in you because it needs that energy, this delusion that something uh, bad can happen. It needs that bad energy to keep going. So that's why you have to stop it. And the way that you stop it is by recognizing what's happening and the destructive nature of it, right? How it's not helping you at all. And you'll begin to see that a lot of your unhappiness or uh, discontent is produced by the fears, the narratives, the voice that you have in your mind that keeps telling you all these things that could possibly go wrong. 
So it's important now more than ever to pay attention to the inner voice. Start challenging uh, the things that you're saying to yourself and find out what it is that you need to focus on that can build you happiness, that can help you with optimism. Uh, positive affirmations is definitely one of the, the, the best ways to go, as well as positive visual visualizations. During this time of uh, being at home, or at least staying at home and, and quarantining and spending more time, uh, a lot of us are, are by ourselves, right? Or we're around family, which is great, but we still have to, to carve some time out for ourselves and do some of this inner work to dig through some of the, the, the things that we've been challenged with for so long that we've uh, been distracted from. Now's a great time to center our focus and focus on how do we truly bring happiness? How do we truly utilize our skills, our gifts, our talents? How do we use our mental power in a way that brings us so much more power and leverage than what we've had before? And it all starts with the mind. It all starts with how you view life and the things that are going on, on around you and within you. Remember that there are things that are out of your control that you never had control of and that you will never have control of. The sooner you acknowledge that and accept it for what it is and understand that it's okay because there are things that you can control and the things that you can control are your thinking, your response to your thinking, learning yourself, learning what's truly valuable and important to you, learning what's important in terms of your relationship with others, compassion, empathy, knowing that you have more control over any situation because it all starts here with how you view it. And if you Look at your fear for what it is as just something that happens and that you can separate yourself from it. I have no doubt that you will thrive in any situation in life. So when we talk about fears, know that it's a choice. And the sooner that you separate yourself from this fearful thinking, the more free you'll become in your mind. This is another inspirational moment with TL from Dream to Inspire. Remember to love yourself, to live your dreams, and inspire the world with your story.